Hi, I'm Barbara Parkoff, President of Highland Park Conservative Temple Congregation on JMF. Until last year, the President's message was given at the Kol Nidre service. Last year, when there was no service, Stuart Beinblatt sent it out to all of us in, through the internet. I've chosen to, the, to do the same this year again in an effort to help keep the services as short as possible. Although the COVID pandemic is once again creating stress and anxiety, we're able to come together this year in our beautiful sanctuary for the high holiday services. The services are abbreviated and we're masked, but we will have the opportunity to be a community once again. This has been an amazing year an amazingly good year, and an amazingly bad year as well. It has astonished, astounded, and surprised us. At the same time, it bewildered, stunned, dazed. We've also been perplexed, dismayed, and disconcerted. But we're in the shul, together. We have much to be thankful for. I'm comforted when I sit in the sanctuary, when I sing the melodies that I identify with Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, when I hear the shofar sounded. I am delighted to make round challah and bake honey cake and apple cake. I know apples and honey are the tastes of these holy days, but I wondered why, and how long has this been our tradition? So of course, I went to the internet to find the answer. I read that various sorts of cakes sweetened with honey have been known since ancient times in Egypt, Rome, and the Middle East. According to the Encyclopedia of Jewish Food, honey cake was first mentioned in 1105 as a fine flowered challah with honey. According to a book by Stephen Buchmann, German Christian pilgrims developed a taste for honey cake on their trips to the Holy Land during the Middle East. They enjoyed the dish enough to take it home. They named it Le Kach, and that was found in Germany in the year 1200. Honey's ability to keep cake fresh made it valuable in the days before refrigeration. Honey, it turns out, is a powerful preserving agent. Even today, therefore, it's the one dish we can bake early in our holiday preparations. Many recipes claim that the dessert tastes better as it ages. Some even suggest that it should be baked several days to a week prior to serving to allow the flavors to develop. Marcy Goldman writes in A Treasury of Jewish Holiday Baking, honey cake is a very personal thing. There are loyalties around honey cake which rival the matzo ball soup debate, soft and fluffy versus hard matzo balls. Everyone, it seems, has a honey cake recipe tucked away in a recipe box. So why is it snubbed at the table? Honey cake is a symbolic food. Just as fruit cake is served and goes uneaten on Christmas, honey cake is based more on tradition than on taste, until recently. Basically, a good honey cake recipe is hard to find. Generally, people find honey cake dry. So if you have a recipe that's actually eaten and enjoyed at your table, I suggest you send it to me. We can compile a honey cake compendium that we can hand out next year prior to Rosh Hashanah. What about apples? Sorry, you'll have to wait until next year for information on that. I want to encourage you to come to Shabbat services in the shul. We're so grateful to Rabbi Malamit and Hazan Weiss for their efforts to provide in-person Shabbat services since June 2020. We sit socially distanced in the side sections. We sit in Tayback Hall in small pods spread out across the room. We sit outside. We wear masks. We also daven together both in shul and on Zoom on Sunday and Thursday mornings. We've begun to hold small gatherings in the shul. These include coffee hours at various times of day and different days of the week. The Tuesday morning Sisterhood Torah class and some sisterhood and men's club events. We certainly hope that as the year progresses, the virus will abate and we will be able to expand our in-shul events. We've planned a number of Zoom events sponsored by Adult Education and the synagogue. 
These will include a Jewish travel series, one a month starting in October, to Poland, Russia, the Roman ghetto, and a walking tour of the ghetto in Venice. We've also scheduled a conversation with Lacey Schwartz Delgado about her film, Little White Lie. It explores her shifting racial identity and what it means to be black and Jewish. Another event, True Colors, is a live performance about experiences of Jews of color. This enlightening show will explore the impact of living as Jews of color when inclusion and equity are not always practiced in the Jewish community. Several additional speakers are also planned. This year, we were very fortunate to be the beneficiaries of a three-year $3,000 challenge grant from the Marion and Norman Tansman Foundation to reduce our mortgage. We're delighted to inform you that we have succeeded in matching the grant. We're also grateful to our synagogue family for their generous response to the Shomri Hakihila program that was launched in June. We are most thankful for our temple staff. Executive Director Linda Tondo, Dan, D Diane Kurzitz, and Beth Spur have been available for us all. They are very caring professionals and very committed to the synagogue. Beth makes sure the Milestone Kiddush is, is a success every month among her other duties. Diane even provided us with a mask fundraiser that brought in a lot of dollars. The Temple board members have tried to contact every, everyone in the shul several times throughout the year to find out how people are doing and what assistance people may need. Our Chesed Outreach Committee, our Sisterhood, and Men's Club have provided friendly phone calls and support and have tried to assist our members in many different ways throughout the year. This will, of course, continue as we struggle through the next months. As I was reading the Slichot service, I came across a meditation written years ago but so applicable to our lives today. We are gathered together, embraced by the peace of the sanctuary, away from the clamor and glare of the world, away from its confusions and terrors, grateful for the opportunity to meditate upon the year that has gone and to pray for the year to come. We face not only a new year, but a changing world where new technology and continual upheaval threaten all life everywhere. But we are a community. We are a caring community. We are a committed and strong community. I encourage you to stay strong as we live through this amazing, extraordinary year. Wishing you all a very happy and healthy and peaceful new year and a good fast 